All right, hello everyone. Um, my name is uh, Benjamin Vidal. Um, I think I know pretty much everybody in this room except two people. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about um, creating a Helix module. And so um, um, my, um, I guess, presentation or uh, interaction here is going to be a little bit different. Uh, I typically uh, stay out of uh, slides, so I'm going to go through a couple of slides real quick, okay? Um, but, this, but this part of the demonstration is going to be very, very technical. Um, how many developers do we have in the room? If you're a developer, raise your hand high, say, okay, great, great, great. How many non-developers do we have in the room? Okay. Can we wave them like we don't care? Like you can. Don't care? I, I get, if you are a non-developer, I give you a license to fall asleep. It is okay. Okay. It may be boring. I apologize. Um, if you are a developer, feel free to ask questions. Uh, there may be a lot. Uh, we are on part three of introduction to Helix Concepts. Uh, and so I think we're kind of in the advanced level a little bit of what we've been talking to. So there's been two other uh, presentations on this. Uh, the first one went over the guidelines of Helix. What is Helix? Um, what are some of the concepts, some of the key points? Um, and, and basically, Helix is a set of overall design principles and conventions for Cycro development. That's their official definition of what Helix is. Um, and one thing that I really uh, like to um, discuss uh, and present is the modular architecture that Helix provides. To me, this is uh, the backbones of why Sitecore is introducing this type of architecture uh, into their uh, product is so that we can actually modularize our code and reduce the number of dependencies between code. Um, at first, using uh, Helix, um, I've been using Helix probably for about a year now. Um, I've done it probably on two, two and a half projects. I'm not sure how I get a half, but maybe two and a half projects. Um, and so I had some, some, some reservations to actually using Helix as a, uh, an architecture in terms of development. And I think um, over the year I've gotten, I've, I've grown fond uh, of the architecture. Um, to me, there are still some, some things that need to be worked on. Uh, number one, speed uh, in terms of build time. Um, but I think it's a steep learning curve if you're not familiar with, uh, with this type of development. Okay, and so what I want to do, I think um, the, the best way for a developer to get exposure to it is actually to see somebody do it uh, real time. So I'm going to demo it real time. We may come across problems, which is okay, because that happens in the real world, and then we solve them on the fly. Feel free to ask me any questions, okay? So, um, so I'm going to uh, go get, dive directly into Visual Studio. Uh, and explain how we got to this point. In the other two videos or other two presentations, um, we went through Helix, the second video, uh, the second uh, season or um, um, uh, presentation in July, we showed you how to install uh, Habitat um, from the ground up. And Habitat is Sitecore's example of how a Helix architecture should be done. Okay, if anyone's not familiar with it. So Gilbert just had a demonstration of the Habitat uh, installation, uh, and that's just kind of an example of, of how it's done. This is the Visual Studio solution of Habitat, okay? And I won't go into installing it last time because it probably took us about an hour to go through that, which is real, uh, real fun. But there's some th key things that you need to understand about using Helix, using uh, Habitat as a foundation for your Helix architecture, there are a couple technologies that you got to be familiar with. Number one, um, this solution is based on a source control using Git. I, I would not recommend this using a traditional TFS solution because it just won't work. Um, they use a lot of um, uh, NPM packages, number one, Gulp being primarily the way you build things. So you got to be familiar with Gulp. How many people here are familiar with Gulp? Raise your hand. All right, I got, I got three. How many people are familiar with Git? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Got a little bit more people familiar with Git. And so uh, there's also additional technology that uh, I've grown to love. Um, uh, it's free, it's open source, um, and that's uh, the technology of Unicorn. Uh, Unicorn is a serialization mechanism that, that gives you the ability to serialize your cycle assets uh, down, down to the file system. Um, it works with Git so it can go directly into source control and it allows you to share assets between developers uh, very, very quickly without using Cycle packaging to transfer them or without using TDS 
uh, to do it. TDS is great, um, but one thing that um, Unicorn, I think, has advantage over using TDS for development is that, um, from when I use it, is that Unicorn does the, um, the serialization automatically for you. So if you, if you make a change inside of Sitecore, it automatically gets serialized down to the file system. And then your Git source control picks that change up. You can check that, commit that change directly in the source control. Your devel other developers can get it, sync it with their solution, and then they have the same cycle or assets that you have. It's just like sharing code, so which makes it really, really powerful. Any questions? All righty. So one of the things um, in the past that I mentioned about uh, a Helix architecture is that you will have, um, in, this, in this Habitat solution, you all can see that there's a lot of folders. Um, a lot of folders. Um, that's all I can say. Each one of these folders may have any number of projects. Okay? Which also means that each project that's contained in the folder is a separate .NET assembly. So it's, it, it is possible that a single Habitat solution can have 70 to 80 assemblies to represent a single website. You know, you know, I come from the past where, you know, you just needed like three or four. Okay, so four to 70 is a pretty big jump. Um, also, the, the amount of projects in a Visual Studio solution can kind of slow down um, Visual Studio itself. So something to, be, something to remember when working with um, a solution of this magnitude. But you don't need all of this. You can use um, um, the, the features and foundation uh, projects that, that you feel are necessary for your particular imp implementation. One thing about Helix is there, there are three main layers to focus on. There's the foundation layer, the feature layer, and the project layer. Uh, so if you go back to some of the videos, you can kind of see that we go, to, go in those quite, uh, quite a bit of detail. Um, but a real quick review is that the foundation layer is everything, um, is basically the utility classes. Everything features are based upon, okay? And then the layer above the foundation is, is called the feature layer, okay? Um, blogs, alerts, uh, kind of your high level business features you're going to build in that type of layer. And then the next uh, helix layer is the project layer. The project layer is where your website is stored. Your website uses features. Uh, uses modules, I would say, from features and foundations to actually build a specific website, okay? So in the Habitat example, there are two um, folders. Um, the Habitat represents the Habitat website, okay? And this Habitat website uses uh, the features identified here in this list, and those features use some of these foundation projects, okay? The goal is to minimize dependencies. And what I mean by that is if I create a, if I create a module uh, such as uh, demo or accounts, I only need to reference the project that makes sense for my, um, for my code. I don't need to reference an entire assembly that touches all of the project's code, like the all the business layers and all the utilities. I only need to create code that's used for my project. This is good because it reduces the risk of someone else coming in changing an underlying piece of code and breaking half of your website. I've seen it before. I've done it myself in the past. Don't tell anybody. But um, it's, it's something to reduce um, problems that occur when, when, um, when maintaining projects. Um, and at first I had some reservations in terms of setting something up like this, but I got to see how Helix works uh, in the maintenance environment. It's, it's very powerful because now you can be, uh, now you can have some assurance that if a developer is going to change a piece of code, they're going to change it in one module and it's going to only affect that module versus infecting your entire project. So it's, um, it's really powerful in terms of setting up an organization structure. Um, because it's powerful and because there's a lot, it can be easy to, um, I would say, mess it up. Okay, so it's, it's, uh, you have to be very organized and very disciplined when creating a Habitat, pro uh, a Helix-based project. So, one thing that I found challenging us is actually creating a new module from scratch. So, in Visual Studio, you can kind of see that the, these projects are neatly organized in a folder and they look all nice and neat. Um, let me open up the file system real quick here so we can get an idea of what that looks like. But in the file system, this is my uh, root folder of my solution. In a file system, if I go into source, click on feature, I got the same folder structure here. Accounts, demos, accounts, demos, 
if I click on accounts, I get three folders now. That doesn't map Visual Studio. And I'm not sure how many people typically have their Visual Studio folder structure mimic their file system structure. I got one, two, okay. So typically, you'll just right click on the folder, create a new project, and wherever Visual Studio placed that project, that's what you're operating in. Well, if I were to do this in Helix, which is I'm going to show you, it doesn't come out the same way. This, this file system structure, structure doesn't match the Visual Studio um, folder structure, okay? So I'm going to create a, a, new, um, a new module here. Um, and I'm going to call it Banners. And I'm going to create a new project. Call it banners. Uncheck that guy. Don't need that. All righty. And I'm going to create an empty ASP.NET project. One thing I want to I want to point out that I didn't say earlier is that a lot of these projects inside of this Helix solution is a web project. It's not a class library. So you got to be careful with that. So I'm creating a web project. So this solution probably has, you know, 60 different web projects. Typically, I would have one in a solution for a single website, okay? So I'm going to create an empty web project. And for time, I mean, I could add another test unit project, but I'm not going to do that. So even though they do it, I'm not doing it for the purpose of just, I don't want to mess with it. All right, so I created a new project. Now, in Visual Studio, the organization of that um, folder structure looks perfectly fine. But if I open up my solution folder again, what has happened is that Visual Studio has now placed my project at the root of my solution. How do we fix this? Well, let me tell you the, the consequences of this. If you're using GET, your source control will blow up automatically and put all your changes at the root of your site and that's not what you want. You want this project in a specific location in a specific place. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this project from the solution. Wow. I'm going to go to my file system. Create a feature folder called banners. Create another folder called code. Go back to the root, grab the contents of that project, paste them in a folder called code. And I'm going to delete that project folder so that my file system stays clean. Okay, I'm an organization freak. I'm going to right click and add that project back to my solution. Banners. Now I get the same structure as all of the other modules. Okay, so I just click on, click on the counts code so that you can see that it's there. And now I'm clicking on banners and the code to see that it's there. I'm also going to create another folder inside of that uh, structure called serialization, and I'll explain what, why that's important as well. So I got two folders that I've created. So this is just the beginning part of creating my module. Now because of Visual Studio, because I have changed the location of my project, um, my uh, NuGet references are actually messed up. And so I found this out the hard way by figuring out why won't this thing compile? So if I actually try to compile this, I believe it's gonna give me an error. If it works, I'll be surprised. Boom, blah, blah, blah. New Git packages references messed up. I haven't found a good way of fixing this except to do this. Go inside of the project, open it up in a notepad, and remove the references that it's complaining about. Now, I could change the reference paths, but I just typically just delete that uh, and delete those two because this path is no longer valid.
and then my project reloads, I should be able to compile. All right, there you go. I save you guys days, hours of what it took me to figure that out. So um, that, that's important. So, so now my project compiles. It's in this right location. I can compile it. And now I want to make it resemble another Helix module. So typically what I do is I go to packages. I'll, I'll copy the same thing another module has, um, which is great to have um, Helix as a, um, I'm sorry, Habitat as a starting point. And I'll remove a couple of these guys here. I don't, I don't need all this stuff. I'll remove that. Now, one thing that I have is I, I'm, I'm, I'm connected to Sitecore's um, um, NuGet server. So I, get, I can get some of these references using NuGet. Um, and then what I typically like to do is reinstall these packages. So right now, my blank module doesn't have any of those de references. So I'm just gonna reinstall those references real quick. Um, and since I'm a, I, I grew up a Linux baby a little bit, um, I like to use command lines. So for those of you who like to use the command line. So I'm gonna go update, package, reinstall, project name, and then select my project name. And let's hope I don't get any errors. Well, that didn't work out well. There you go. That would be the reason to get an error. Kathy was on it. QA. <laughs> VA. <laughs> uh, so now what's happening is um, my Visual Studio project is downloading the references uh, required from the packages.config. Okay. Who's used new, who, has, who here has used NuGet before? Everybody? Okay. Good, good, good. So you all are familiar with this process. Or so, do, you, do you all use the command line or do you guys use the, the GUI? What? The GUI? Paula? Command line? Which, which one do you use? Command? Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. All right, so now I have um, my .NET project created. I got a blank project that's compiling. This is good. We got a good start. The next thing I need to do is set up my serialization for Unicorn, okay? How many people here have used Unicorn? Ooh, Unicorn. Okay, I know, I know you use the Unicorn. Um, <clears throat> this, is, this is an important step. So I'll show you why Unicorn is, is really, really powerful. But let me go ahead and set that up here. I created an uh, app config folder, create an include folder that looks, mimics Sitecore. I'm going to create a folder called Feature. We're following the Helix architecture, so we want to stay compliant. And then I'm going to create a folder called Banners. And then I'm going to cheat by just going here to another project that I created real quick, uh, opening up and copying some files. So I'm going to click here, go to an another one, project, go to Banners, Code, and then add two config files in there. And then I'm going to rename them. Now as you can see, we haven't began creating any code yet. Typically in a project, you would right click on a project, update a couple references, and then you're good to go. This is, part of the he this is part of the Helix discipline, doing all of this. It takes time. So when the executives and the, and the business people say why it's taking so long, you ask them, was your requirement for me to create this based on Helix? And they say yes. And they say, this is the reason why it's taking so long. So just one of the things to be aware of. It, it does take a little time to set up. All right, so let me show all projects. Let me uh, include this, and then let me include this. And then basically, uh, what I like to do is every single module has a configuration file. This also means because every module has a configuration file, I can truly add modules and take them away pretty, pretty easily. You know what I mean? I don't have to have all of my settings for all of my code in a single, a single configuration file. So remember, modular, modular code. We're reducing the number of dependencies. Brett, how much time do I have? Because I'm, I'm not paying attention. I'm, I'm looking at you. You got one minute. Oh, what? Okay. 
we're, we're going to speed this up a little bit. So I didn't think that I would get through everything today, but uh, time goes go by pretty fast. So what I'm doing is I'm setting a serialization file. This serialization file identifies what paths inside of Sitecore will be serialized to my file system. So that serialization folder that I created, this is going to tell that this is going to tell Sitecore to serialize assets, renderings, templates, and the media library to specific folders on the file system, which is important in order to maintain the Helix architecture and structure. Okay. One, one thing I'm going to do uh, that I would recommend anyone, uh, anyone to do if they're using Helix, this is a very important aspect, is when you, every, since every project um, that you most likely will create will be a web-based project, go to the web config and you must do this, otherwise when you deploy the solution it's going to break everything. Um, go to the web config and set the build type to none. Um, give me one second here, where is that at? Set the output type. Oh, am I clicking on the right thing? Uh, yeah, here it is. Set the build action to none. To none. There we go. This is going to make sure that when you compile the Helix solution, it doesn't copy the web config over to your web root, which will destroy your cycle web config. So, because remember, my Helix code base is not in the same solution as my web my web root directory. Something to keep in, keep in mind. So what I'm going to do is take this solution over here, go back to my task runner, which brings up um, Gulp. Um, the, the, the Habitat solution has given us all these Gulp tasks that we can use to actually deploy code over to our destination web, di web directory and also execute um, a unicorn um, sync as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is publish all of my configs. And it's going to, it may take a moment. And then I'm going to show you an error. Uh, I'm going to attempt to do a unicorn sync, which is going to take all of my assets and uh, serialize them in a site core. And it's going to fail. And the reason why it's going to fail is because when I create a new module, one of the first things I need to do is create <coughs> these paths inside of site core. These don't exist. I'm creating a new module. So Unicorn needs to know that these things are going to exist in order for my serialization process to take place. Okay? And so because I'm probably out of time, I'll just kind of explain my next steps. What I would do is just create those items inside of Sitecore, go back to my Unicorn Sync, perform, uh, perform a Unicorn Sync, and then I'll be able to see my serialized assets or a blank folder inside of this um, inside of the serialization folder, okay? So that's the bare basics of getting started with creating a Helix module and then you can add your code inside of the module however you want to, okay? Any questions? So many questions. I know you should have a lot, I'm sorry. All right, Thank thanks.